YouTubers. Um, I'm now going to do a little demo run. Um, I just did a demo run before, but it turned out my camera wasn't recording. Um, this was the, the the little demo that I did then um, from this mould. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't recording, so I'll have another go. So it's quite straightforward. Um, so we'll turn the heater on. Uh, the problem I've found is that the plastic heats quicker in the middle than around the edges. And around the edges is where it's the most important because that's where you're going to get the most stretch on the plastic. Uh, so I have this heat gun. Also, I need to put a bit of our high-tech release agent on the on the mould itself. You see the plastic is just starting to change shape a little bit. Already, it doesn't take long. Um, I've removed all of the thermal cutout electronics from the from the heater um, because keeping it in an enclosed space it would trip itself out. Um, it was quite simple to modify the wiring. There's just three heaters. Um, I'm not so sure you can see it, but the, the plastic is changing shape already. If you heat it too much, you'll actually burn a hole through the plastic. So you just have to an even um, softness to the plastic. So say I have the biggest problems around the edges, which is why I've um, wired it so I can turn the middle heater off. See the plastic's getting floppy already. Um, I think this is PET G plastic, uh, but you can use ABS. Uh, they all have slightly different melting temperatures. Um, this seems to go soft at about 150 degrees. So that's 160, but only 130 around the edges. So. That'll break if we go any more than that. Right, are you ready? just heated the plastic a little bit too much in the middle and it's getting a slight marbled finish to it. Um, unfortunately the first one that I did 
is actually the better example and I managed to heat the sheet more evenly throughout the, the whole piece of plastic. Um, this one's not bad, but the finish isn't as brilliant. So, we'll have a go at pulling it out of the mould itself. So we release it from the table. As you can see, the mould's still stuck in the back. Release it from the frame with these lovely little spring clips that I got off eBay. You know, Chinese high quality products. So, there we go. There's the mould, and there's our finished shape. Um, what you can then do, peel off the protective film. And that pops beautifully high gloss plastic product made in your own garden. Shed. This is my conservatory actually. Um, as you can see, there's like a slight mottled finish to the top of this one, and that's because I've overheated it slightly. Um, what you then do is cut it out. Here's one I've made earlier, um, and this is actually a cowling for a, um, a small heat exchanger for um, a liquid cooled PC system. Uh, the radiator sits in there, and then a little fan screws to the back, um, which I've cut out with a hole saw, and it just, you know, draws air through the through the radiator, um, the heat exchanger, whatever you want to call it. So, so there you go. That's quite a lot of draft, you know. We've, we've pulled what best part of three inches on that mould, and uh, the definition around all the corners is pretty good. So I'd be quite happy with that. So it is, I've slightly overheated it. Um, but trying to do it on camera is um, puts the pressure on. So these are the packs of plastic that I've been buying. Um, I don't know if you can read this, uh, but the part number is uh, 37-3182. And I think I got it from RS components, uh, but these are for educational purposes for school vacuum forming. Um, and you get uh, 10 in a pack. Um, they come in all different colours red, black, blue, green, white, and transparent. Um, you can use different types of plastic, and these are about 15 quid a pack. So each sheet of plastic costs you about £1.50 approximately. 